Ahead, a narrow escape. Next thing you know, just <laughs> kind of lit up. Meet the man who was living inside one of the cars burned Sunday night during a suspected crime spree. Plus, another federal government shutdown looms. We don't know what to expect, uh, hoping for the best, of course, and yet preparing for the worst. How will it affect people right here in Billings? And five Americans return home after years in Iranian prisons. We'll tell you the latest on the deal. The MTN News starts right now. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. First on MTN, we are learning more about the victims in Sunday night's vehicle fires that left two vans and one SUV destroyed. The vans found on fire in the Billings Senior High parking lot were used by the life skills classes for crucial transportation. Meanwhile, the SUV found at the HRDC building was serving as a home for one Billings man and his two dogs. He spoke with our Haley Monaco. These are videos many have now seen from a bizarre Sunday night. First, this fire in the Billings Senior High parking lot from what police say was a gas theft gone wrong. This is a, this is a pretty big impact. Josh Beeman, the head of the special education department at Senior, says the two vehicles were life skills vans used to transport students in special education classes. These vans specifically are used for getting students to and from job experiences. The Billings Fire Department estimates the damage is around $20,000. As of Tuesday, the high school was still waiting for their rental vans to arrive. It affects the most vulnerable of our students. Yeah. Hopefully we can get something figured out in the, the interim that helps these guys get a little experience. And senior high isn't alone. Another vehicle was set on fire just down the road about 30 minutes later. Two dogs were inside this now charred CRV just moments before it went up in flames. An SUV that doubled as a home for Chance Larson, who was inside the HRDC building. I went to a Narcotics Anonymous meeting because I'm like, I think I'm five days clean today. Someone ran into the meeting to let everyone know a vehicle was on fire right outside. I ran out. It was uh, indeed my car. Larson's first thought, get the dogs out. Everything else is just kind of, it's replaceable. The dogs, they are not. Larson lost almost all of his belongings in the fire, but says he has people who are helping him get back on his feet. He isn't sure who set the fire, but worries it may be his past coming back to haunt him. When you're in active addiction, you tend to piss people off. And then drug addicts do what drug addicts do, excessive violence. Meantime, police continue to search for the suspects in both fires, separate incidents they currently believe are not connected. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. We're now 11 days away from a potential federal government shutdown as House Republicans remain at an impasse to fund Congress past September 30th. It would be the first shutdown in almost five years. But what would it mean for people here at home? Our Jackie Coffin explains. Right now, federal agencies here in Montana are making contingency plans in case the government shuts down on October 1st. One agency in Montana worried about a potential shutdown is the U.S. Department of Justice. If it's really bad, if there are significant cuts, it will, um, it will affect our operations, which affects um, what we're able to do to do from a public safety standpoint throughout the states. U.S. Attorney for Montana Jesse Laslovich says if a shutdown came, federal law enforcement and courts would have some employees deemed essential to continue work, while others may be furloughed. I, I would say it would be devastating. I'm less concerned about the impact to our office, which would be significant, and more concerned about the impact it'll have in the communities. However, none would be paid during the shutdown. Instead, they'd receive back pay when the shutdown ended. That's just some of the anxiety growing is the U.S. House of Representatives can't agree on a series of funding packages that keep the government operational. Part of that disagreement comes between House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and the House Freedom Caucus, including Congressman Matt Rosendale. Hear from Matt Rosendale coming up at 5.30. For now, in Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN. News. Well, we are officially one month away from a brand new Costco on Billings Far West End. The company lists October 19th as the opening date for this new facility on Zoo Drive. 
You can see there's been significant progress made on the building, which will be 166,000 square feet. That's 25,000 feet larger than the current Costco on King Avenue. The new space will also feature 850 parking spots compared to just 591 at the current space. There's no word yet on whether the King Avenue location will continue to operate when the new one opens. A comfortable day today with the Stockman Bank weather cam, but as we start getting into the next couple of days, a shift in the weather. Still pretty pleasant tomorrow, but an increasing chance of rain by the time we start getting in tomorrow. Still going to be very hit and miss, but as the temperatures begin to cool by Thursday, that chance of rain starts to increase, and by the time we get to the end of the work week, some of the coolest temperatures we've seen for a while, and by the weekend, that could even mean a little higher elevation snow. We'll talk about all the forecast details coming up in a few minutes. Five Americans returned to the United States on Tuesday morning after being wrongfully imprisoned for years by Iran. It was an emotional scene as several of the prisoners embraced family members pre-dawn on a tarmac at an airport near Washington, D.C. The release comes after years of fragile negotiations, and while two of the five Americans released asked for privacy, the others speaking out and rejoicing. Secretary of State Antony Blinken telling reporters on Monday it was a day for celebration. It's easy in the work that we do every day sometimes to get uh, lost in the abstractions of foreign policy and uh, relations with other countries. But in exchange for the release of the Americans, President Biden approved unfreezing $6 billion of oil revenues to Iran. Biden officials say the money will be used for humanitarian aid, but Republicans are criticizing the move, arguing that Biden was enabling Tehran's bad behavior in the prisoner exchange swap. This will go into more terror operations where they try to kill Americans, they kill you know Israelis. Uh, it, it funds you know Hezbollah, Hamas uh, in the region. And this is a lot of money. Former President Donald Trump criticized the deal, writing on social media platform Truth Social, quote, this absolutely ridiculous six billion dollar hostage deal with Iran has set a terrible precedent for the future. In 2018, Trump withdrew from the Obama-era Iran nuclear disarmament deal, with Trump and other Republicans arguing that Iran was not holding up their end of the agreement. But the Biden administration says the nuclear disarmament talks are continuing with Iran, but they're running on a separate track from detainee negotiations. Blinken told reporters that the U.S. officials believe the unfrozen funds will not be utilized for Iran weaponry. Uh, we're very confident that the, uh, the funds, the Iranian funds, that have been uh, made more easily available to Iran as a result uh, of uh, the actions that we've taken uh, will be used exclusively for humanitarian purposes, and we have the means and mechanisms to make sure that that happens. While most Democrats praise the Biden administration, centrist Democratic Congressman Dean Phillips tweeting, Iran is a clear and present danger, and the prisoner swap deal is disconcerting on the surface. That said, it's irresponsible to draw conclusions until the administration shares more information. I'm hopeful there's more than meets the eye and will opine once that's clear. Kevin Cirilli, Scripps News, Washington. Still to come on the MTN 430 News, interest rates could rise once again tomorrow. We'll tell you the latest on how it might affect you and later. I'm Ryan Gamboa for MTN News on Capitol Hill. Federal crop insurance might be the most anticipated aid package throughout the entire farm bill. Coming up, we hear from farmers impacted by disaster the most and hear what our legislators have to say about the program.